if you have one of these personality disorders and you're unusually attractive, man, you can go fucking far. Oh, you yeah. can go really. I had a girl come to me the other day. She goes, oh, I can always tell when they're a sociopath. <laughs> no, you can't. Okay, so so here's the thing. I, I, every episode, we, every episode, I always bring up an example of evolutionary psychology. I say that anything that is pervasive amongst Homo sapiens has to exist somewhere in evolution. So now let's look at this. If you could tell someone's a sociopath, borderline, or narcissist, then that would no longer exist in the population. Yeah. Let me say that one more time. If you could, if there was some way to tell someone had a type B personality disorder just on the rip when you meet them, then no one would have a type B personality disorder because we would know we would lock these people up and we would not mate with them. That's that. Eventually, those traits would be out of the existence. One of my favorite books is The Murderer Next Door by David Buss. Oh, by the way, I recommend every book by David Buss. Uh, and he talks about where where does sociopathy come from? Why would something like this, where people have no empathy or remorse, have no impulse control, and have no inability to to make maintain friend groups, why would something like this exist in evolution? Why would evolution select for something like this? So just imagine about tribes of about 150 people. Let's go back 50,000 years ago. What would happen is you were mating with people in this tribe until it grew to a certain size and then the tribe would bifurcate and you'd have two tribes of about 150 people. You'll notice 150 is about the size of most military units where after you get to that number, then you can't remember all the faces and names of people. So you have this tribe of about 150 people and then there's another tribe of people that are a threat to you and you have to survive. There's maybe 100,000 homo sapiens on the planet. There had to be someone in your tribe who was willing to go to the other tribe and pick up rocks and smash people's heads while they were asleep and not have any nightmares mm -hmm. about it. Yeah. There was an evolutionary necessity for individuals like that. And they have existed throughout uh, history. Read about Cain and Abel, read about Genghis Khan, read about, um, read about Adolf Hitler, read about Joseph Stalin. These people were not new. They didn't come from nowhere. Joseph Stalin was not the leader of Russia and he, be and he happened to be a sociopath. He was the leader of Russia because he was a sociopath. That's a lot of a lot of people don't understand. Adolf Hitler was not the leader of Germany and he happened to be a sociopath. He was the leader of Germany because he was a sociopath. The excessive amounts of charm, the pathological lying, the, the ability to convince large large like you have to be able lie. to win people over Correct. guys. The big lie. To to engage in this kind of behavior, you you are winning people over. So there are qualities about you that are like highly desirable and and, and favored. And we we really kind of like we undermine that kind of influence. Um, and, and how powerful that is. And then we can kind of beat ourselves up about it. Like, how did I get fooled? Well, like, I don't know anybody in their right mind that would say, you know what? I would love to date a sociopath. Right. I would love to marry a narcissist. Mm -hmm. I would love to be ex exploited. I would love to feel like I'm crazy. Like, nobody and signs up for that. There's something bigger going on, guys, and we, we have to pay attention to that. So you, again, the point is you can't tell. Yes. Do not be so arrogant. Tell. Don't be so arrogant to think that, oh, you, like, yeah. um, Oh, I'm the, but no, I when know the, the difference. I have a feel, you know why? Cause I, I'm a Libra or yeah. I'm a Virgo. So I can tell, I, I put my crystals near this guy and I burn some sage. This mother is a sociopath. No, you know what? My cat didn't like him. He's a, so stop it. Stop it. If that, if it was easy enough to do yeah. that, they would have been natural selection would have removed them from the population, but it has not the, it, anything that pervades amongst a population of homo sapiens must it, it exist somewhere within evolution. And so that's the, that's the reason why these type of individuals exist. And not only do they exist, they become your president. They become the warden at a prison. They become your police commissioner. They become a doctor or, or a nurse. They talk about in the um, confessions of a sociopath, they talk about people like nurses who like w were sociopaths because they got to boss people around. They had control over under also individuals. Also sick clients. Yes, you know what sick I mean? clients, it's, it's exactly. It's a way to have complete power and By control. Way, yeah. Number one mass murderer of all time was a guy who worked in a hospice. He would basically just like bend the oxygen tubes for people. Guy killed like 70, 80 people. Some people say he killed 115 people. Terrible. Okay, so now you're bringing up a great point uh, as far as like making it relatable. Yeah. So I don't have a degree in psychology. I have yeah. a, like I studied physics and, and business in college and I was a U.S. military officer. So I don't have any real background in this. I just read a lot of books about it. But the, the, the difference is I have to deal with this regardless of whether or not I have an education. Yeah. This is just a theory of mine and you can you can maybe disprove or prove my hypothesis. I have a belief that individuals who are low empathy individuals, and we'll talk about maybe they're borderline or maybe they're narcissists or maybe they're, they're sociopaths. I believe these people are attracted to places like Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Absolutely. Miami, New York, Chicago. So whereas the average in the country may be, and it's, of course, this is a very difficult disorder to diagnose, so we don't know. I've seen anywhere between 4.2 and 3.3% of the population, and I've heard even numbers crazier than that, are sociopaths, but 
I believe in Las Vegas, we're talking seven, eight, maybe 9% of the population, which sounds insane when you think about it, one out of every 10 people. But when I go back and I think about it, the number of non-empathetic people I've met in this city, especially in Los Angeles, yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. So what do you think about the fact that people, and even someone who has borderline personality disorder, somebody like that being attracted to uh, a place where there's high status and a lot of money? I think they're naturally going to be attracted to places like that, like higher traffic places, places where they're going to be seen, places where they're going to be noticeable because it meets their needs yes. those are those are qualities that are going to be attractive in those personality types so you're naturally going to be more flooded and and see that whereas like in a rural area like you're not really going to see a ton of narcissists hanging out right. like in Podunk, the cows. Yeah. you know what i mean like that's not going to be attractive right. to them they're not going to get that right. narcissistic supply in a place like that they're yeah. not going to get the attention the validation all those things but you go to a place like LA where there's celebrities and and you know they can rub elbows with somebody famous well, that feeds their needs. So they're going to be more drawn to places right. like that. So specifically what we'd be talking about is a narcissist being drawn to the modeling industry in Los Angeles, a sociopath being drawn to Wall Street in New York. Absolutely. Something like that, would, would that changes the numbers. We've had some disagreements about this. I personally think that sociopathy is a genetic disorder. And that's, that's just the th- things I've read. If it's normally distributed amongst the population, you're going to get higher numbers of these type of individuals, low empathy individuals, going to places in Miami, New York, Atlanta, uh, Dallas, uh, Washington, or I'm sorry, New York or uh, Chicago or, or places where there's a lot of money, status, and good looks. And that's just something that I've noticed. So when you live in these big cities, you see a lot more of this, right? Absolutely. You're going to be more flooded with it. It's not going to be an accurate pool. Yeah. Um, it, it's going. There's going to be an imbalance, absolutely. And I, and that's why I think, you know, I, I hear so many people talk about dating in Vegas, yeah. dating in L.A., right? Like, it's hard. Yeah. It really is because it is a unique atmosphere. Yes. It is not your typical run of the mill atmosphere. The jobs here, they're f-ing model jobs. They're not regular jobs. Right. You know what I mean? So the standard changes, the personality changes, the people that are attracted to those positions, uh, they're, they're different. You have to have a certain level of like just character traits alone to even maintain a position like that. Yes. You know, so like it, it totally changes the pool that you're picking from. And and I think that that is a big reason why it's so hard to find meaningful relationships in places like Vegas. This is just a theory that I have. Gregory House on House MD, right? Uh, Walter White on Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's the guy? Is the star of uh, Mad Men, the, the main character. Do you remember? Uh, Tony Soprano on The Sopranos. Okay. Uh, and uh, Jack Bauer on 24. And then there's, um, I'm trying to think of some other ones. These people are written, if you read the script, they are written as clear-cut clinical sociopaths and then they love their family they're clear-cut clinical sociopaths and then they give money to charity at the end Gregory House goes and does this like helpful thing and then as a society we watch these these tragic heroes that are like very evil in most of the things they do Jamie Lannister is a great example from Game of Thrones we see their behavior and at the end they do this redeemable thing and then we start thinking oh you know my brother who's a sociopath maybe we can fix him well they do that they do that to humanize them right yeah. part of that is is entertainment but it's also to like excuse bad behavior I think it's dangerous I think it, it I, I, I think Tony Soprano if he's a sociopath does not love his wife and kids either he doesn't love anyone <laughs> and so it becomes very confusing where it's like because there is conditional sociopathy. We saw it in Vietnam where we looked at people who were the Viet Cong and we believed all these people who were innocent. Every one of them did not have the right to live. We didn't even see them as people. There is conditional level where you completely lose empathy for a type of person even though you're not a sociopath. Uh, that, that does happen. There's also, uh, Martha Stout talks about this, about corporate sociopathy where you have a situation where you have a corporation where no one in the corporation is a sociopath but the, so- but the corporation in and of itself is only interested in the shareholders and because of that there is no empathy or, see- or consciousness conscience in the behavior of the corporation. Mm -hmm. And so now you have a corporation behaving like a sociopath. Does that make sense? So that becomes a very interesting dichotomy. If you have one of these personality disorders and you're unusually attractive, man, you can go far. You can go really. So this is another thing that makes it really scary is that if you are a a guy and you're just a regular dude and you have some sort of personality disorder, a lot of times you're going to get fished out for it. But if you're uh, an incredibly attractive female or a really attractive guy or maybe a professional athlete or something like that, you could get like if you're an incredible basketball player and you're a narcissist and you make it all the way to the NBA, nobody's going to stop you from being a a narcissist. Like no one's going to stop you from where you're going. And so what I found is that like I give an example 
example, Marilyn Monroe had a diagnosed psychiatric disorder, and Marilyn Monroe's mother had the same psychiatric disorder, and Marilyn Monroe's grandmother had the same psychiatric disorder, and she still got all this work because she's a fantastically beautiful woman. A lot of times you're going to see that. You're going to be like, I don't understand how this person made it through life, and a lot of times it's because they're really attractive well, or have high status or some talent. 